back to Yarnside Chats. I'm your host, Sarah Wilson, coming to you Yarnside from the historic Elms Resort and Spa in Excelsior Springs, Missouri. Today we're going to be talking about Judy's Magic Casson. Judy's Magic Casson was originally developed by Judy Becker for Knitty.com as a way to start toe-up socks. Judy's Magic is great for socks, but there are a lot of other things you can do with this casson as well. Today we're going to be talking about using the casson as a provisional casson and also using the casson, um, knitting across the casson flat instead of knitting across it in the round, which gives you a nice little cup shape. Um, I use the casson this way for my pattern in this issue of Knit Circus. Um, we've started a hoodie from the top of the hood using Judy's Magic Casson and we've knitted this whole hoodie from the top down in one piece. And you can see, this is where I started with the casson right here. It's totally seamless, it's totally invisible. From the back side as well, you can't see where the casson was made. And uh, we're gonna be talking about how to do that. So first off, we're gonna just, I'm just gonna demonstrate real fast how to do Judy's Magic Casson, and then we're gonna talk about how to use it for some of these other ways. All right, you ready to get started? So what you're gonna need, you're gonna need your yarn, and then you're gonna need, actually, for this um, tutorial, you're gonna want two sets of needles of the same size. I actually forgot to bring two of the same size, so I've got two different sizes, so we're just gonna pretend like these are both the same size, because um, that's what you're gonna need. All right, let's go do it. All right, for this cast on, you're going to want a tail about three times as long as the width of the piece you're making. So if you're casting on for a piece that's gonna measure four inches, um, finished, you're going to want 12 inches plus however long of a tail you want for weaving in. So say a 6 inch tail plus about 12 inches, that's about 18 inches or so. Just kind of guesstimate, that's fine. Now um, I'm going to demonstrate, first I'm going to demonstrate how to use Judy's Magic Cast On as a provisional cast on and for that we are going to want two needles. Circular needles are best but you can it kind of depends on what you're making. Um, the circular, the second circular needle is going to be acting as basically a stitch holder um, used as a provisional cast on. So real fast we're just going to demonstrate how Judy's Magic works and remember that you're going to act like these needles are the same size because you definitely want them to be the same size. I just forgot to bring two of the same size. So we're going to, here's our tail that we've got measured off. Okay, we're going to put the tail on the right, we're going to put the um, yarn over the needle that's in the front, so towards, towards me, with the tail on the left and the yarn from the ball on the right. And that is on the front needle. Okay, so first what we're going to do is we're going to take the um, yarn ball side of the yarn, we're going to bring it around to the back. All right. And now we're gonna put the um, we're gonna put the yarn in the hand, um, a lot like you're doing a long tail cast on. You're gonna form a diamond. So um, your index finger is on the left side, your thumb is on the right side, and you're holding the two tails in the palm of your hand like so. And that's how you're gonna hold the yarn throughout the cast on. So um, you are really ready to go now. So basically, what we're gonna do now that we're all set up, we're gonna be twisting to the back. So this end is going to be basically what you're going to do. The, the tail end of the yarn, which is now on the right side now that we've twisted, is going to be going over the back needle. So you're going to twist, you're going to bring the yarn up between the needles and bring that over the back needle like so. Now you're going to twist again and now the other side, the back side, the side that's on the left, um, around your index finger is going to come up through the needles and go over the front needle like that. Okay, so basically you can see we're just twisting along the bottom. We're kind of making pearl ridges along the bottom of the needle there. You'll be able to see that more clearly when we're finished with the cast on, so don't worry about it too much right now if you can't see it that great. So um, that's it, that's the whole cast on. We're just gonna be repeating that down the needle for as many stitches as we need to cast on. So once again, I'm going to twist and then the thumb side is going to come up through the needles and over the back. We're going to twist again 
and now the index finger side is going to come up through the needles and over the front yarn. Twist again, thumb side goes over the back, twist, index side goes over the front, twist, thumb to the back, twist, thumb over the front, and twist, thumb over the back, and we're just going to repeat this down the needle as many times as you need to get the cast on. Oop. And as she goes really fast once you've got used to it. All right, so we'll call that good. So basically, if I was going to use this as a provisional cast on, what I would do, I would pull, um, I would pull the back needle, the needle that is away from me, I would go ahead and pull that needle through the stitches, and now I'm just going to leave that needle. I'm going to leave those stitches on that cable needle, or if I was using a straight, I would just leave those stitches on the straight needle. So now we're ready to turn. We're going to turn um, clockwise like so, and we're going to bring the tail end of the live needle and then we're, we're ready to just start working flat. So, whoop, whoopsie. All right, so um, for the first row, you're gonna knit all of the stitches through the back loops. So we're just gonna work across the row, knitting the stitches through the back loops, and all the while, that other side of the cast on. So say if I just cast on 40 stitches, I have 20 live stitches that I'm knitting across right now, and I have 20 stitches on hold. So this is great for a provisional cast on because unlike the crochet cast on or some of the other cast ons, you have to have waist yarn that gets unzipped and sometimes you can't unzip it and it's a huge mess. This is just cast on and the stitches are already live, ready for you to pick up later on. And now we can just work back and forth across these stitches. So now I'm ready to turn again, because I am working flat across 20 stitches. So I'm just gonna turn the work. Now I have the wrong side facing me, and I'm going to purl as normal. I only have to purl through, I only have to knit, sorry, through the back loops on the very first row. All the other rows are going to be worked regularly. So we'll just purl across this row real fast and then you'll be able to see that the work is growing on one side. We still have the same number of stitches on both sets of needles. I have 20 live stitches that, I am, that are being worked back and forth and I have 20 stitches on hold. Now if I was using this for a hem or whatever else you might be using a provisional cast on for, I would knit maybe another two inches or so, then I would be able to fold that in half, then I would, I would scooch that needle that those stitches were on hold, I would scooch that back in there, and I'd be able to fold. I don't really have enough right now to demonstrate this, but you can get the idea. And then you would be able to knit through you would take the tail end of your needle and you would have 20 live stitches here, 20 live stitches on this side, and then you would just knit one from each needle together if you were doing, again this is if you were doing a hem. Um, there's a lot, a lot of things you can use a provisional cast on for other than a hem, but at, usually at some point the stitches get knitted together or whatever it is that's going on. Possibly you could be doing an edging across these 20 stitches or you could, you may not be grafting them together at all. So whatever it is that you're, you're doing, you've got your 20 live stitches on the needle right here, ready to go. You don't have to unzip, you don't have to have a crochet hook, you don't have to have waist yarn. It's really awesome for that. So once I learned how to do Judy's Magic Cast On, thank you Judy Becker, um, I pretty much ditch the crochet cast on or any other provisional cast on because I really like this one a lot better. Um, it's convenient. The only thing is you have to remember to bring two needles of the same size. <laughs> um, you could also, what you could do if you have forgotten and you're in a bind, if you only have one needle of the same size, what I could have done, I could have cast on across my needle of the proper size, across the two tips, and then what I would have done, I would have just taken the stitches on this back needle and put them onto waist yarn, 
They would still be live stitches or I could put them onto a stitch holder and they'd be ready to go either way. So if you've forgotten a second needle, you can always do that, no big deal. Um, okay, so that is how we're, we would do Judy's Magic Cast On as a provisional cast on. So um, we're gonna pause the video, I'm gonna rip this out and then I'm gonna demonstrate how to do Judy's Magic Cast On and knit across that flat using the Magic Loop method. So give us one second and we'll be right back. All right, now I'm going to demonstrate how to work Judy's Magic Cast On flat across two needles using the Magic Loop method. I've already got the stitches cast on. Now we're ready to do the first row. So what we're going to do, we're going to um, rotate the work clockwise, and then you're just going to pull this needle that's closest to you out of the work. We've got a loop on this side, and now we're going to have we're going to be forming a second loop making the magic loop on the other side when we knit across the first row. So when we knit across the first row on the first needle only, we need to knit all of the stitches through the back loops because when we cast on, just that, that one side of the needle is um, twisted. So in order to untwist them and have a nice, seamless, invisible cast on, we're going to knit them through the back loops. Now this is just on the first needle on the first row. All the other rows will be knitted and purled exactly the way that you would normally knit and purl. So, um, okay, when I get to the end of the row, we're gonna have to readjust the needle for the magic loop. So what I like to do, I just um, like to hold on to the needle that I've just finished knitting with, and you're just gonna pull on the cord. And when the needle starts to go into the stitches, what I like to do, instead of having to try to fight them on there, I'm going to go ahead and turn the work clockwise again, and then I'm going to, um, again, pull the needle that is closest to me through the stitches, and now it's a lot easier to go ahead and push these stitches back up onto the needle. So now I'm ready to knit across the rest of the row. This is not the second row. We're still on the first row because right here, the work is going to be joined on this side. The work is going to be open on this side. So what's going to happen as you keep knitting, you're going to be forming a fold right here and there's going to be a fold down the back as well. It's um, really great for making a hood shape. You could also um, use this method for a handbag or a pocket or um, really a lot of shapes if you, just anything that needs to be joined on two sides. If you need it joined on three sides, you could just kitchener the work when you're finished and um, that would be awesome too. And then you get a totally seamless way to have a piece that is joined on three sides. So now I've finished knitting. That was just the first row. I've knitted across two needles, but that counts for one row. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna readjust the needles. I'm just gonna turn the work over so that the wrong side is facing me because again, we're knitting flat. So I'm gonna turn the work counterclockwise and now we've got the purl stitches facing and then we're gonna purl across the first needle and then we'll readjust um, the needle for the magic loop and finish the row on the other side. So we're just gonna purl across these real fast and then when I get to the end, we'll, oops, pull my yarn out there, we'll readjust. So you can see this is pretty simple. If you already know how to magic loop, you're going to um, exactly know what you're doing. So now I'm just going to readjust the needle, pull this one out and push that one in. So push all the stitches up on there. And then I'm going to um, purl across this row. And then when I get done, I'll be ready to turn the work. I'm not going to keep going around. Once you work across both of the needles, then you're going to turn the work. Because if you didn't turn the work after you knitted across the two needles, you would be going in the round, which would give you basically a um, toe-up sock. It would give you a little cup shape. So and we're going to turn. Now I'm ready to knit back across this needle. Then I would rearrange. I would come back across. And you would keep doing that. And um, I showed you at the beginning of the video what that would make. That makes a great little hood shape. Again, that's going to be joined on two sides. The side that you started the cast on and then the side that's joined by the magic loop method. So um, that's it. That's pretty much how you would do that. Just keep repeating those two rows over and over. Alright, let's go wrap up. 
That's it for this time. You've just learned how to do Judy's magic cast on and how to apply that cast on in two unique ways that do not involve socks. I'm the Sexy Knitter reminding you that sexy is a state of mind. Visit me on the web at www.sexyknitter.com. Thanks for watching. See you next time.